The official meaning for precognition is the foreknowledge of an event, either as future sight and the psychic ability to see events in the future. Precognitive dreams are defined as dreams that appear to include knowledge about the future, which the person has not read in books or heard about in the media. There are many famous authors throughout history who had somehow prophesied the future many years before the event happened in books, such as Jules Verne, who predicted the Eiffel Tower 26 years before it was built, and he even predicted the fax machine, automobiles and the electric light. Arthur C. Clarke accurately dreamt and wrote about a Jupiter landscape that at the time was invisible from Earth. The following are two famous events in history where people actually predicted and wrote about what would happen, where they were totally unaware that they were precognizant. Titanic One of the most written about precognitions was of the Titanic, where certain writers had somehow predicted the Titanic sinking. In 1886, British editor and novelist W.T. Steed would write about nightmarish dreams that he'd had since his childhood, where he was in icy waters fighting for his life. In his magazine, the Paul Mall Gazette, his story was based around a liner that sank in the Atlantic that had too few lifeboats with many lives lost. His visions would continue until 1892, where he wrote a novel titled From the Old World to the New where he described a huge liner that struck an iceberg in the Atlantic and sank. A vessel called the Majestic attempted to come to its rescue. The fictional captain of the Majestic was E.J. Smith, and 20 years later, the captain of the Titanic was called E.J. Smith. In 1910, he gave a lecture in London where he described himself struggling for life in freezing water after his ship sank. Steed appeared to be making so many predictive warnings about impending doom and noted clairvoyants were warning him not to travel in April 1912. A young clergyman warned him that he had dreamt about the Titanic sinking on its maiden voyage. In February 1912, President William Taft had offered Steed an honour and invited him to speak at an international peace conference and even sent him a first-class ticket aboard the Titanic. Ignoring not only his lifelong precognitive dreams, but also those of the clairvoyants, warning him not to sail in April 1912. Steed nonetheless boarded the Titanic at Southampton in April 1912, and went on to become one of the many fatalities who perished when the Titanic struck an iceberg. In 1898, Morgan Robertson wrote a novel titled Futility that traced the history of a huge passenger liner by the prophetic and fictional name The Titan. In his novel, The Titan was believed to be an unsinkable liner that struck an iceberg in the Atlantic Ocean and sank in mid-April 1912. This fictional liner had too few lifeboats which resulted in the death of 16,000 passengers and crew. The Titan was described as the largest vessel ever built at 268.2 metres long, where the Titanic was 268.9 metres long. The identical comparison between the Titan and the Titanic strangely identical. How could someone write such a predictive novel 14 years before the actual disaster? There has to be some type of precognition for Morgan Robinson as there were far too many similarities between the liners and the consequent disasters. Skeptics called the novel a mere coincidence, full of lucky flukes, but the comparisons are far too numerous to just call it a lucky fluke. Seven days before the sinking of the Titanic, a short story was written in New York's popular magazine titled The White Ghost of Disaster. The author was Maine Clue Garnet who wrote about a passenger liner the size of several cathedrals and during its maiden crossing of the Atlantic Ocean was sunk by an iceberg. The author also mentioned that the liner had too few lifeboats, as did the Titanic, and that a nearby ship had ignored its distress rockets, as had also been the case. Main Clue Garnet told reporters that he had based his account of the sinking on a long vivid dream, which had disturbed his sleeping while it was on the Titanic sister ship, the Olympic. Princess Diana In 1978, a young English journalist by the name of Tim Heald 
was working as a raw reporter, and through his experience writing about the royal family, decided to write a novel about his specialist subject. In 1979, he wrote a book titled Caroline R. that was published in 1980, and he used the pen name David Lancaster. Hill claimed that when he wrote the novel, he'd never heard of Lady Diana Spencer, and at the time, there was talk of Prince Charles marrying a foreign woman. But as he was over 30, they feared he would never even get married. Before he wrote the novel, he worked on the premise that what if the prince had erred in his choice of women, and that the woman he chose to marry was unfamiliar with the incredible pressure of being part of the royal family. This was to be the start of his novel, and from that point, there were creepy similarities. In his fictitious novel, he calls the bride to be Caroline, who was tall, long-legged, slim and blonde. That was an almost identical description of Diana. Caroline gives birth to two children, but at that point she realised that marrying into an institution such as the British royal family was a big mistake. In the novel, her husband is actually the king and always appeared distracted and absent, leaving Caroline at home bored and unhappy, just like Diana. Caroline tells her husband that she wants to do useful work and he allows it, which was life-changing for her. But increasingly, Caroline, just like Diana, became a major security threat, as she would regularly give unscripted speeches and would speak out against animal cruelty, nuclear armaments. Diana was also outspoken on the same subjects and spoke out against landmines, which upset the military establishment. Caroline also spoke out against the appalling raw blood sport of fox hunting, just like Diana. Caroline is warned that it is important to uphold the monarchy, which is important to British stability. Soon, scandals broke out about her affairs, where the paparazzo was taking disturbing photographs of her in various locations, and the intelligentsia was now examining their options. Slowly, Caroline, as with Diana, was in a state of nervous exhaustion, writing desperate and revealing letters. She claimed her only true confidant was a press secretary in the palace, just like Diana, whose butler, Paul Burrell, she claimed was her rock. Caroline's life was now at risk, where two strange officials discussed the possibility of disposing of her in a car crash. Although Caroline was totally unaware that powerful officials were working against her interests, she still had her suspicions and believed her life was at risk. There are chilling similarities where Diana kept a diary and confided with a confidant in the palace that if she was suddenly to lose her life, he must retrieve her diary and send it to a best friend in the United States. What Tim Hill wrote in his book, Caroline R, was strangely prophetic. Two months after her divorce from Prince Charles in 1996, Diana wrote a letter to butler Paul Burrell expressing fears that someone was scheming to take her life. In the letter, she wrote, I'm going to date this and I want you to keep it, just in case, and added, this particular phase of my life is dangerous. Eight months later, she'd lost her life when a car crashed in a Paris tunnel. In the novel Carolyn R., Hield also wrote about a second car that was white in colour and was part of the conspiracy, but was never traced. In Diana's crash, witnesses claim to have seen a white car tailgating Diana's car in the Paris Tunnel. But just as in the story, the car was never traced. 